since I've met you and moved to Sydney, I haven't listened to one ABBA song. That's because now my life's as good as an ABBA song. It's as good as Dancing Queen. When I got the job, I was just happy to be, to, to get a job, to not be delivering pizzas, which is what I was doing right before that. Um, but it felt like a religious experience. It felt so epic. Um, and I was so kind of quote unquote married to it. <laughs> um, and, but you can never determine how a film's going to be received and everything that happened after the world premiere at Cannes was just blew me away. I, it completely changed my life. It opened up so many doors and gave me so many amazing opportunities. I don't know, it made me feel like I, I really maybe could do this, but I've, I've never ever thought that I would have, I never thought I would have a career. I just thought it was a one-off, to be honest. I know that you had to put on a lot of weight in a, sh a short period of time. Do the pizzas help at the time? I don't know if I ate many pizzas. I remember drinking a lot of like, uh, what was it called? Ensure Plus. I think it's like a, it's a, it's a high fat kind of drink that they give to people in nursing homes. Um, if I had seven weeks to put on, I think it was 43 pounds. Wow. Yeah. How do you really feel about ABBA? I love ABBA. I love ABBA. Always have. <laughs> and everywhere I go when Dancing Queen comes on, I just think, I'm so happy this song follows me everywhere. Were you able to find the romance of the forest? Oh, blast. I forgot. Well, Harvey uh, Weinstein had Miramax at the time and had purchased Muriel's Wedding. And mm. so I think he was kind of keen just to pop me in a couple of films. Emma was a big ensemble cast and it felt like much more of a family. Um, and Doug McGrath was just a beautiful uh, writer director. And we were shooting most of it out in Dorset in the countryside in England. And it was just a great, fun group of people. Velvet Goldmine, I think for me, Oh, I just loved Todd Haynes for casting me in that because, you know, I'd played characters like Wendy in Spotswood and Muriel in Muriel's Wedding and Harriet in Emma and all of these characters are very unsure of themselves. And then I think that my character in um, Mandy in Velvet Goldmine was, was insecure, but in a very different way. She was very, very, um, I mean, that whole period, that glam rock period is just so seductive and so glamorous and so kind of risque. And um, and to be included with that group of actors at the time, I just felt like it was such a, such a gift and like I was getting away with something, <laughs> you know? Um, but that one was crazy fun. That was just, uh, that was, I never wanted that one to end. It was really just amazing. You cry because you miss grandma so much. That's right. I read it very late at night, but I was actually in New York meeting Martin Scorsese for, for a film called Bringing Out the Dead, and I was so enamored by Marty and, you know, obviously wanted to... I knew about him, I didn't know who Knight was, so I, I was kind of focused on, on trying to work with Scorsese, who wouldn't be? I still want to work with him. Right. Um, and, and then I read this film at like two or three in the morning, and it was so surprising. It was so shocking and so emotional and so original. And it just blew me away. I just, I thought it was a beautiful story, like a spiritual story, really. Um, it wasn't until we were making it that I, I walked past an editing suite and I was like, oh, I see what's going on. This is actually scary. Me. <laughs> but I remember I was, it was before cell phones and I had called the hotel. I just had a feeling that there was some information that had come through and there was a message from my agent and my manager at the time saying, call me. And I was with Christian Bale at the time and I went into a phone booth on the street and he was standing there going, what's going on? And my agent said, you've been offered. And I screamed before he, before he got it out. And I thought he was saying, you've been offered bringing out the dead. And he said, you've been offered the sixth sense. And I was like, oh. <laughs> a lady, she broke her neck. Oh my God, but you can see her? Yes. Where is she? Standing next to my window. That moment with you and Haley Joel in the car, it's so, because the movie's terrifying, but then there are these 
really deeply profound moments uh, and, and deeply emotional moments. What, what, what can you say about filming that scene? I felt like it was bubbling up so much in me that I remember the night before I went to New York and went to like a Burt Bacharach, Elvis Costello collaboration, this live performance that was being filmed just to avoid thinking about it because I thought I don't want to get too involved in it. I just need to be present in the moment because if I think about it too much, it's just gonna, I don't know, it'd be too much, too, too intense or something. Yeah. And it was intense anyway. Um, and I remember when we did it, they night shot Haley's side first. And I was just bawling my eyes out. And he kept saying, Tony, Tony, you know, we're not even on you. Just wait till we turn around. But I was so full and so kind of present in the in what that meant to me that it, it just, it was very healing actually doing that scene. One role that it's it said that you had to turn down around this time was Bridget Jones. Um, was that was that a tough decision for you? I really couldn't make the decision. I was busy doing a musical on Broadway called The Wild Party, and I wasn't available. But sometimes, sometimes I think about that, and, and I think I don't know that character so similar to Muriel. It might have been too close. Mm -hmm. You know, when I tried to, I tried not to repeat myself. And you would have had to have more of those milk drinks. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll have the, the vegetable platter. We're vegetarians. I'd never have guessed. Um, steak sandwich, please, mate. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I play a, su a suicidal woman who feels like she's failing at being a good mother and failing the world, not being able to, you know, save the world. Um, I remember thinking, all of you assholes are in a comedy and I'm the one in a tragedy here. I was really jealous of their experiences because mine, I think, was a little different. I loved working with Hugh. I love Nick. I'm so proud of the, the actor he's become and he's so beautiful. And I'm still in contact on and off with Chris and Paul Whites and, and I, you know, bump into Rachel every now and again. And I do, I am very aware of how that spoke to a lot of people in terms of connections and in terms of the family you make you know and where mm. you feel accepted and where you feel loved and where you can be yourself it was yeah. quite profound the worst part was when they closed their eyes Killing me softly with his song. you are a very good singer in real life but i don't think that was the point here to show off your musicality what, 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 was, the, what was the direction there that you got i think just to make it painful you know <laughs> like oh no one wants to hear it um Ironically, that is my go-to karaoke song, but I sing it very differently. <laughs> nice. Oh God, the world, the world needs to hear that version someday. Remember when Olive was runner up in the regional Little Miss Sunshine? Well, the girl who won had to forfeit her crown. I don't know why, something about diet pills, but anyway. Well, the thing is, there's no such thing as normal. That's what I love about it. You know, it kind of just, they're a group of people who happen to be family and they're figuring it out together on the road in a bus. And everyone was so great and perfectly cast and all the dynamics were just clear and beautiful and weird. I turned 50 next week and it's, this is kind of a timely conversation to kind of look back. Yeah. But it really was a special one. It has a big heart and it says a lot of good things. just the sweetest thing because it's so innocent and so wrong <laughs> just to watch this little girl who has no clue moving in a way that she, she has no idea what she's doing I remember being in fifth grade and my friends and I decided we wanted to sing and dance we wanted to put on a show in front of the class to that song by the Pointer Sisters I'm so excited and as soon as I was old enough to realize that how inappropriate that was, I was like, why did the teacher let us do that? But we just felt so free. Um, and it's that kind of thing. That's exactly what she was doing in that moment. She was feeling so good in herself. It didn't matter. It didn't matter that she was taught like all the wrong moves. Honey, we've got enough to do. I mean, does it occur to you that now that I'm better, you're just looking for another project? You were given the lead role in United States of Terror by Steven Spielberg without auditioning. Uh, what, what kind of moment was, was was that for you in your career? I remember it was before things were really sent via email. And um, so I picked up the script, a hard copy of the script from my agent in Sydney. It had been sent from my agent in LA. I drove. There was a drum store underneath the agency. And so my husband went in to look at them, some drums. And I sat in the car and read the entire thing while he was in there. And he got back in the car and I was like, oh, I have, I'm doing this, no question. Like I had, it was an absolute no brainer. I knew in myself that it was written for me and my soul needed to do it. And, and I was right. It was one of the most beautiful, um, profound, challenging in all the right ways, 
experience and everyone evolved. I mean, if they asked me to go back and do it tomorrow, I would. That's how much I loved it. I was so sad when it ended. It felt premature. And it, I think it happened before all of this streaming stuff really kicked in in a way it was ahead of its time. But the story for a comedy was just so moving to me. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. You okay, Mom? What? I'd done intense films before, but on this particular one, I went into it with the knowledge that it really was going to be difficult just because of the content. And so from the get go, I was aware and my intention was to take care of myself. Usually I just will do anything and then I kind of would collapse at the end. But as we incrementally moved forward in the shoot, I took care of myself every single day. So I was, I kind of came out of it unscathed. I, I had no choice. I had to do it. Yeah. Some films are like that. Some stories are like that. Um, not anything, not anything I've ever said in an interview, but tell us about song off your head. Well, you know, the story to me is just a really sad story about a family grieving. And so when it came to doing that, which is an overtly horrific moment, it felt ridiculous. I was hanging, hanging up in the attic and Ari had such a specific, Ari Aster, the writer director, brilliant writer director, had a very specific idea of the rhythm of how I use the piano string to saw my own head off. So, I literally was watching him and he was moving how he wanted me to move until it got faster and faster. So it was kind of technical in terms of just pleasing him in in that, in the rhythm of how that movement was. Um, and it was fun actually, it was fun putting all the prosthetics on and getting all the, you know, the blood all lined up and, but it just felt like a complete departure from what the film actually meant to me. No one move until we figure this all out. What? Can we ask why? Has something changed? No. No, it hasn't changed or no, we can't ask. So, 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 so much fun. I felt so honored to be asked to do that. I mean, uh, it was like an incredible cast and Ryan is a genius. And I just remember we were shooting in this big mansion for the bulk of well, the whole thing. Uh, and we all just adored each other so much and it was cold. We just hunkered down in the basement, like all sipping tea with our little blankies in our coats and telling stories and, it was just um, just a sweet, sweet experience. Just such a good time, really was. Well, it's it's a meme now, so I have to ask you, how did it feel to have Captain America tell you to eat <laughs> I've never seen Captain America, so it didn't mean anything. 